Welcome to part two of the video. In the first part, we looked at ways of effectively reducing rumble, hum, crackle, and broadband noise. Now we're going to take a look at improving clipped audio. Now it wasn't so long ago that if something had been clipped at the recording stage, you couldn't do anything at all about it. Now, to an extent, you can. I'm just going to play some audio here. This was from uh, a short film I worked on uh, probably a couple of years ago now, and a lot of the dialogue was recorded just too hot, so it was distorted. Here's an example. No, 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 no. What about Jim and Peach? They both died when that van rolled. And that was no accident either. I checked that motor before. So, not good at all. One solution to this, I'm going to use another isotope plugin, and it's the D-Clip plugin. This is included with both versions of Isotope RX, the standard one and the advanced one, and also the much less costly RX Elements. So the way that this works basically is, I'll play the audio in a second, you set the threshold, what you'll start to see here is a representation of the audio, and uh, what we want to do is pull the threshold down so it's just below where the clipping starts, and essentially what the plugin does is it recreates or at least estimates what would have been there if the audio had never been clipped in the first place. Let's just take a listen, so preview it. No, 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 what about Jim and Peach? They both died when that van rolled, and that was no accident either. Okay. I checked that motor before. No, 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 what about Jim and Peach? They See both this. died when that van rolled, and that was no accident. Notice how there was a peak there, that's where there's a lot of power, that's probably around the clipping point. So. Next, when I play it, I'm going to gradually reduce the threshold, and hopefully we should start to hear um, a reduction in the amount of clipping. There we go. No, no, no. What about Jim and Peach? They both died when that van rolled. And that was no accident either. I checked that motor before. No, no, no. What about Jim and Peach? They both died when that van rolled. And that was no accident either. I checked that motor before. Okay. We'll only hear the true result when we process this, but I just want to mention this makeup gain here. It's a good idea to reduce this because, you know, in recreating those peaks, it's going to up the overall level. Now, there is a post limiter, but I want some dynamics to be retained. So I like to just keep the limiter on just to control any stray transients and also pull this down a little bit. I'm just going to guess there and then render this. Now you can see quite a difference. Let's just hear it. No, no, no. What about Jim and Peach? They both died when that van rolled. And that was no accident either. I checked that motor before. It's pretty good. Compare it to what we had. No, no, no. What about Jim and Peach? They both died when that van rolled. And then new one again. No, no, no. What about Jim and Peach? They both died when that van rolled. And that was no accident either. I checked that motor before. That's good. So basically, we've saved the day with that. Now we're going to move on to recordings which have too much reverb. Here's an example of a voiceover which seems to have been recorded in a, a bit of an echoey space. With almost every manufacturer represented from the world of commercial vehicles, there was plenty for visitors to look at. And whilst many will be coming back to check out a specific vehicle for their fleet or a company, you certainly wouldn't get bored here. Okay, so I'm going to use another one from RX this time. And this time around, it unsurprisingly is D-Reverb. I'm just going to start with the default settings again. Take a listen to this. With almost every manufacturer represented from the world of commercial vehicles, there was plenty for visitors to look at. And whilst many will be coming back to check out a specific... That's quite good. If you want to hear the reverb or what's being removed, then that's what this does. See, I've... I've gone really, really far with that, and you can hear, the more voice you can hear when you're supposed to hear reverb only, the more artifacts you're going to have, and the more it's adversely affecting the actual voice that you want to keep. So once again, it's all about balance. With almost every manufacturer represented from the world of commercial vehicles, there was plenty for visitors to look at. And whilst many will be coming back to check out... Okay, I'm pretty happy with that for now. So I'll just AB between the two. Here's the original. With almost every manufacturer represented from the world of commercial vehicles, there was plenty for visitors to look at. And the new one. With almost every manufacturer represented from the world of commercial vehicles, there was plenty for visitors to look at. Once again, if you listen really carefully, there are some slight artifacts. So again, if you spent a little bit more time tweaking the settings, you could probably get a better result. But for a very quick job, that's been fairly effective. 
Finally, we're going to move on to the most challenging section, which is audio with a variety of problems. And so in this case, I've got something from cassette here. This was recorded in 1990 on a cheap domestic cassette recorder, one of those little mono ones with a built-in microphone. And uh, it sat on a ferric tape for years, and then it was recently captured into Pro Tools. Let's just take a listen. At the very bottom, there's a little goldfish with big bright eyes. He is very shy. He hides behind the weeds and peeps out to make sure no one is about. Okay, so immediately I can kind of pick up on three things there and I'll, I'll tell you what they are then I'll play it again. So the obvious one is that there's the, the hiss. It's more than just hiss. It's kind of quite broad frequency band noise again. Secondly, there seems to be some low stuff going on, which is more some kind of mechanical side effect of the mechanism probably. And finally, there's an intermittent kind of glitching, which is a little bit like white noise, but mostly just higher frequencies. I'll, I'll play it again. At the very bottom, there's a little goldfish with big bright eyes. He is very... So you know that ch ch that comes in periodically. Let's try and reduce these. Sometimes, really problematic audio like this is beyond the realms of what you can effectively do just in Pro Tools. So on occasions, you may need to use some other software alongside Pro Tools. And in this case, I'm going to send this to the full version of Isotope RX. And that's done with the RX Connect plugin. You'll notice that I've got an AUX input here, which has this other one called RX7 Monitor. And this literally is just a return, an audio return from that software. So I can monitor RX via Pro Tools. I've selected the audio here. We've got the Audio Suite plugin, which is Connect. Just make sure Repair Selected, Send This, and this is going to go to RX. There you can see it. So there are several videos on the internet, really good videos uh, about RX uh, from people who know more about it than I do. So if you really want to learn about this software, I'd recommend uh, seeking those out and watching them. But for now, let's just see what we can do reducing the problems in this. Basically, we've got uh, the audio waveform and in the background there's a spectrogram and the spectrogram plots frequency against time so time is along the bottom frequency is up the side and the brighter the color in the spectrogram the more energy there is in that particular frequency band so what we can see here is see these little vertical lines that's those glitches i mentioned about the kind of pff, pff noise that comes in there's also a lot of power in the bottom of it and so that's probably that rumble. Let's just play it one more time just to hear it before we start changing anything. At the very bottom there's a little goldfish with big bright eyes. He is very shy. He hides behind the weeds. And okay, I'm going to try and tackle these low frequencies first. Now, of course, I could have done these in Pro Tools, but let's do it here. Um, a basic high pass filter once again should do it. Before I apply it, actually, let's just close that. If you want to view more detail on the lower frequencies, you can right click in this column and change the frequency scale to uh, something that has more resolution in the low end. Extended log is a good one. So now you can see I've got a lot more kind of range to, to view in the bottom end. And it looks like there's virtually nothing going on in the dialog below 200 hertz. That's probably the frequency limitation of the built-in microphone on the cassette recorder. You can actually listen to just a range of frequencies. There's three different selection tools here. You've got time selection, time and frequency selection, and frequency selection. So I'm going to select everything below what looks like the dialogue. Now if I play it, we should hear just that section. There we go. Okay, so it seems like there is no dialogue there. It's just noise. And that's, you know, what, somewhere around, say, I don't know, 180 hertz. I'm going to open the EQ, go to the high pass filter. Once again, let me just increase the frequency a little bit on this. You've got similar controls to what you have in Pro Tools. You know, you've got the steepness of the curve, including brick wall. I'll go with 48 decibels per octave and preview this. So before I do that, let me just do this. At the very bottom, there's a little goldfish. Way too much. He is very shy. He hides behind the weeds and peeps out to make sure no one is about. I'll tell you what, I'll do it at about 160 hertz. So 
select everything and render that. Straight away, you can see that's just been completely eradicated. In this case, that is absolutely fine because there is nothing at all in this recording that's usable, you know, below those frequencies anyway. I'm just going to play that. At the very bottom, there's a little goldfish with big, bright eyes. You can, if you wish to, compare what you've just done with what you had. So there's a history on the bottom right. The initial state is here. The very bottom is a little goldfish with big bright eyes. Okay, that's okay. Now I'm going to try and tackle the... We could either do those intermittent noises or the broadband noise. I think I'm going to do the broadband noise. And there's so many ways that you could do this in RX. You know, sometimes you have to kind of try a couple and compare them. In this case, I'm going to use maybe dialog isolate, I think. And with this one, it separates the dialog from the background noise. And you've got two faders, you know, you can basically set a balance between them. Let's see how effective this is. At the very bottom, there's a little goldfish with big, bright eyes. He is very shy. He hides behind the weeds and peeps out to make sure no one is about. Okay. I don't want to completely wipe it out because I don't want to introduce too many artifacts, so I'm just going to reduce it by whatever I can without, you know, the audio starting to sound really bad. At the very bottom there's a little goldfish with big bright eyes. He is very shy, he hides behind the weeds and peeps out to make sure no one is about. Okay, let me try... So I'm going to add that. If you click compare here, it will basically render the setting and then that's kind of kept in a memory. Now if I open something else, I might try voice denoise again. Let's try this. I'll start out with adaptive and see if that works. At the very bottom there's a little goldfish with big bright eyes. He is very shy. He hides behind the weeds and peeps out to make sure no one is about. Not sure about the effectiveness of this. I'll compare it anyway, just to show you this feature. So now we've got those in the compare window. I can switch between them. So here is Dialogue Isolate. I'll preview this. At the very bottom there's a little goldfish. OK, and then Voice Denoise. The very bottom there's a little... Yeah, that's nowhere near as good. For the sake of speed in this video, I'm just going to go with that dialog isolate and render it. And say that that's good enough for now. At the very bottom there's a little goldfish. Okay, that's okay. Uh, I don't really need to see these low frequencies now because they're not even there. And I want to focus on some of the higher stuff, namely these little periodic noises. So I'm going to once again right click in the frequency column, change the scale to something that favours the higher frequencies in terms of resolution. I'm going to choose linear, I think. There we go. If I just zoom in a little bit on these. This tool is quite useful here. So this selects time and frequency. I can make a selection. Maybe just extend that a little. And now, if I click on this, you can hear just what you've selected. So. In order to reduce this, I'm going to try Spectral Repair. And uh, again, there's several things here. In this video, for speed now, I'm just going to use Replace. So you can see, when I select this, there's also this little extra box around it. And I can change whether it favours the bit before or after. And Replace, rather than just completely trashing that, it will look at the surrounding content and it will kind of interpolate that in order to replace what you've taken out with something representative of the surrounding background noise. Let's try rendering that. At the very Let's compare that. At the very, at the very bottom there's a Okay, that's pretty good. Let's try and do the next one. Let's just hear it once again. Bottom there's a little Okay, select this. Now, I could select this even lower in frequency, but I'm really trying not to go into the speech frequencies too much. 
Let's render that, I think. Bottom lives a little goldfish. Okay, that one's quite a bad one. But fortunately, it happens mostly in a gap in the dialogue. Render it. Goldfish with big bright eyes. I'm doing this super quick again. You know, you can get better results by spending time on it. Big bright eyes. He's very sharp. Okay, there's another one. He's very shy. He hides behind. Another one here. The reason why, incidentally, you might choose to switch this is, you know, if you had another sound here and you didn't want that to be interpolated, you wanted it only to look at, say, some noise which was on the other side, then you could switch it to either before or after and uh, it will ignore, you know, one side or the other and it will only basically take its reference from whichever side you've selected. He hides behind the weeds. That's a kind of double one. I could do those separately or I could try and try and process them in one. I'm not sure what that is. I might, that looks like part of the dialogue, is it? I'm just going to switch this to towards the after waiting. Behind the weeds and peeps out to make sure no one is... I'm sure you're all enjoying this story about Goldfish's day out. Try rendering this one. Out to make sure no one is about. Okay, and there's another one, which seems to be in several parts, but it's just quickest to do it all in one. Out. All right. I'll compare this to what we started with. Here's the initial state. At the very bottom, there's a little goldfish. And then what we've got now. Right. Ah, sorry, I had that frequency range selected. Let's play that again. So this is what we've now got. At the very bottom there's a little goldfish with big bright eyes. I'm going to send this back to Pro Tools now. And you can see this Audio Suite plugin is still active, but now we've got uh, this notification which says, please render to commit changes. So I'm going to click on render. And uh, let's do the comparison once again. This has been very quick. You know, we could have done this a lot more effectively if we'd have taken our time. Let's compare it. At the very bottom there's a little goldfish with big bright eyes. And the new one. At the very bottom there's a little goldfish with big bright eyes. Okay, well, a reasonable result there. Hopefully that's given you a little bit of insight into some of the tools available for dealing with noise in Pro Tools. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or requests for videos in the future, just let me know in the comments. I'll see you again next time. Thank <laughs> you.